Have you ever wanted to check something for fingerprints? It's actually really easy, and you can do it with things that you probably already have lying around your house. So today, I'm going to teach you the superglue fuming method of fingerprinting. Here are the things that you'll need. First, you need a tube of superglue, specifically cyanoacrylate glue. Check the label if you aren't sure. Then you need a small metal tray to hold the liquid superglue. The easiest thing to do is just fold a piece of aluminum foil into a small tray. Next, you need a small heater such as a candle warmer or a coffee warmer to heat the glue. In most cases, you'll also need a small container of warm water. This is used to increase the humidity and helps the prints develop. Lastly, you need a container to house the fuming process. Almost any closed container can work, but ideally you want something that's well sealed and just large enough to fit all the components. Now it's time to set everything up. Place the heater in one corner of the container and put the glue tray on top of the heater. Then set the water next to the heater and prop up the test sample that you want to fingerprint in the corner opposite the heater. You want to position it in such a way that the area with the fingerprints will be readily exposed to the fumes in the chamber. If you want to fingerprint something that's large or fixed in place such as a door or window, you can open up the container and attach it to the area of interest with tape. Once everything is in place, put a large drop of superglue onto the tray, turn on the heater, and close up the container. Because superglue fumes are toxic, you want to place the container in a well-ventilated area. It should take about 10 to 15 minutes for the superglue fumes to react with the chemicals in the fingerprint and leave a white outline of the impression. Once your print is developed, you can photograph it or scan it. You can then further enhance the image with a photo editing program by either adjusting the color levels or by changing the brightness and contrast. Try it out for yourself. It's pretty impressive how well it works. Thanks for watching, and check back next week for more DIY hacks and how-tos.